Cyril here. This is a bit different from my usual flair, but I wanted to address the topic of YouTube polyglots. YouTube and the internet as a whole has made learning languages far easier. If you didn't know someone who could actually speak the language to you back before the rise of YouTube, you would need to buy a cassette tape with that language on it. I'm sorry, did I say cassette tape? I meant cassette tapes as in plural, or any other media in that target language that you could get your hands on in order to learn that language. With the power of the internet, finding content for your target language has never been easier. There's plenty of kids' cartoons out there, Blue's Clues for example. If you watch the Spanish dub of it, you can hear that they are speaking slowly and clearly. There's a fake interactivity level so that you know how to handle a conversation between relative equals. And not to mention, you're not going to be so overloaded with vocabulary because there is repetition in preschool shows like this. And there's also a lower number of words spoken overall because of the target demographic. And once you've outgrown the need to watch a cartoon dedicated to three-year-olds who are immersed in that language in order to teach them conversational skills, and you've built up your vocabulary enough... You can move on to other media, not just cartoons and sitcoms, but also older media such as the news, or different types of media such as House MD, which is a medical drama, or family vlogs. Basically, your options in order to expand your Spanish vocabulary and understand all these accents and how these speech patterns work are not exactly limited. And finding text for your language isn't going to be difficult. However, if there's a darker side to all of this ease of access on languages and how to learn language, I'm talking about the scam artist. Tell me if this sounds familiar. A guy with a microphone decides to go out and hold it to some random guy on the street and ask them questions in the target language. The people they're interviewing seem to be impressed at how well this guy can speak that language. Then there's a cut, and the guy turns to the camera or goes to a completely different location and talks about how much they love learning languages. And they have this revolutionary method that they'll sell you in order to get you to buy a bunch of books or courses or an app. I think you can see the faking right here. These so-called polyglots claim to be fluent in 17 languages, or 70 as some claim. Yes, some actually do this, but they aren't as fluent as you think they are. The shoving the microphone in the guy's face just seems a lot like memorization from things from a phrasebook and trying to pass that off as fluency. I don't hate phrasebooks, they're actually quite useful, I don't deny that. But my problem with these so-called polyglots is that they are a walking definition of false advertising. Languages are vast, languages are dense. True, you don't need to know everything about a language in order to be fluent in it. I mean, when has anyone used the word soupçon in order to describe the portions at some fancy restaurant with high prices but low everything else? And really, before Kingdom Hearts 3, when have any of us heard the term also ran, which is just a pretentious way of saying loser? Still, there's a lot more to fluency than just memorizing words and scenarios where these words come into play. Languages are also cultural, and there's a difference between how languages are spoken versus how they're written. One of the conventions that I, a native English speaker, always found annoying when it came to formal writing, formal writing requires something called the authorial present. It doesn't matter if Charles Dickens or Euripides are dead and rotting. Whenever you write a formal paper, you end up needing to write Dickens writes or Euripides writes, I honestly feel like that's wrong because these people wrote it in the past. But hey, apparently the authorial present is a thing. But even with those out of the way, here's something I rarely see these YouTube polyglots do in their videos. Do they have any other interests besides being phrasebook sayings and saying how much they love learning languages? When I was an undergrad, I knew a bunch of people with varying levels of English fluency. Some of them had backgrounds from places like Spain, Mexico, Germany, or Lebanon. But at the end of the day, we talked about more things than just basic platitudes and how to order at a restaurant or go to the bathroom. We argued over math homework. We argued over whose integration by parts was done correctly. We talked about how different the education systems were between countries when I would say something like, hey, I took that class in like 11th grade. One of the guys in the class who was from a different country would say, uh, 
what's that? How old were you when you were in that class? Because his school system decided to do things like first year high school, second year high school, third year high school, versus like 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th grade. With the Lebanese guy, I got introduced to St. Charbel and the whole Maronite church and their history and their relationship with the Catholic church, the Roman Catholic church, or the Latin church. Hell, there was the guy from Spain who went on a rant about how Chairman Rose's evil plot was stupid, and he did this completely in English. Do the YouTube polyglots have anything they can talk about in languages they claim to be fluent in? Any interests like superhero comics? Hell, the same Spanish guy was a huge Spider-Man fan who probably hated Spider-Man one more day more than me. He was just that passionate about how much he hated the book. I know the feeling, and I never thought I would meet a person in real life who hated that book more than I did. Or again, if they're having problems with homework, can they at least describe how they logic their way through it, and how my answer is wrong, and how their answer is obviously correct, or vice versa? No, it's because these so-called polyglots are just copying from phrase books that they probably memorized this morning and really don't know how to engage in the language other than basic conversational skills like ordering at a restaurant, asking for time, or, well, just greetings. That's why you're probably not going to get a discussion with them gushing about how great their favorite movie is in their target language or how bad their least favorite movie is. By no means am I saying that all YouTube polyglots are fakers. Just like there are people who are simply just good at picking up math concepts, some people are just good at picking up languages. But here's the thing, even they will say that talent got them their foot in the door for that language, but it was bitter work to get actually fluent in that language, and they did hit walls. They will never deny the fact that there were concepts in that target language that were hard to pick up. For example, I knew a girl back in high school who's great at Spanish. She could speak it very well. But the problem is that when she got to the subjunctive, she had no idea what she was doing. That was her wall, and she is fluent to this day. I honestly think she's a doctor for Spanish-speaking communities because bilingual Spanish and English really helps. She also got a 5 on the AP Spanish Language and Culture exam because one of the things she did in order to get her writing speed up was to write a ton of Pokemon fanfiction in Spanish and then critique it by herself. That's kind of funny, but obviously she did something right because AP Spanish Language and Culture was not an easy exam and she got a 5 on it. Now those are just my thoughts. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Kofi. If you have any funny stories about language learning, please leave them in the comments. If you know any actual polyglots who are not fakers, tell me what they think about the whole, oh, you can just learn uh, uh, Esperanto in like 50 days. This is Cyril signing off.